Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu declares that enemies who threaten the Jewish state with destruction are putting themselves in grave danger. Prime Minister Netanyahu holds a trilateral meeting with the leaders of Greece and Cyprus to discuss the advancement of a gas pipeline that is planned to stretch from Israel through Cyprus to Greece and Europe. The Iranian-Lebanese proxy Hezbollah declares the results of parliamentary elections in Lebanon would guarantee the protection of the resistance against Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu declared in remarks he made at a ceremony marking 70 years of Israel's defense forces that enemies who threaten the Jewish state with destruction are putting themselves in grave danger. The Israeli leader reiterated Jerusalem's policy in which he said, whoever hurts us, we will hurt them. <laughs> הקמת המדינה לא הביאה להפסקת הרצון לתקוף אותנו. מה שכן היא הביאה אימה, זאת היכולת להשיב מלחמה שערה נגד אויבינו. מי שיפגע בנו, אנו נפגע בו. ידעו אויבים המאיימים עלינו בהשמדה, שהם יתקלו בקיר ברזל, הם לא יאכלו לנו, והם שמים עצמם בסכנה גדולה. The vocal warning by Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu was apparently directed toward Tehran, that after intelligence reports pointed to an imminent attack against Israeli military installations in the northern part of the Jewish state, an orchestrated attack by Iran's elite Quds Force of the Islamic Republic's Revolutionary Guards. According to the intelligence reports, the Quds Force plans to make use of local forces from Tehran's Lebanese proxy Hezbollah and Shiite militias in Syria that will be ordered to fire surface-to-surface -surface missiles at northern Israel in the next few days. That said, according to an Israeli assessment, Iran does not seek an all-out war with Israel, and so it is believed that the Iranian-orchestrated attack will be a limited strike against Israeli military installations. Nevertheless, Jerusalem has warned Damascus that it could respond to any Iranian attack on it from Syria by toppling President Bashar Assad's regime. In comments made on the matter by Energy Minister Yuval Steinitz, who is a member of Netanyahu's security cabinet, the Israeli minister hinted that Assad himself may be targeted for assassination. If Assad allows Iran to make Syria a basis of war against us, to attack us in the middle of Syria, הוא צריך לדעת שזה סופו, זה סוף המשטר שלו. מי שמאפשר למדינה עוינת כמו איראן להפוך את ארצו לבסיס להתקפה על ישראל, צריך לדעת שאם הוא עושה את זה, דמו בראשו. Minister Steinitz further asserted that whoever is interested in Assad's survival should tell Assad himself to prevent any attacks on Israel. אם מישהו מעוניין בשמירה על שרידותו של אסד, שיתכבד ויאמר לאסד למנוע התקפות טבעים במלאטים על ישראל. Now to another matter, Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu traveled to Nicosia this morning where he held a trilateral meeting with Cypriot President Anastasiades and Greek Prime Minister Tsipras. During their meeting, the three leaders discussed the advancement of a gas pipeline that is planned to stretch from Israel through Cyprus to Greece. Netanyahu emphasized ahead of the meeting the significance of the gas pipeline that would in effect link Israel's vast gas reservoirs to the continent of Europe, a move that will significantly boost Israel's economy. The Israeli leader also raised for discussion the regional security challenges faced by Israel, including the increased aggression by the Islamic Republic, which has, among others, threatened to target Israel's energy installations. Meanwhile, Netanyahu will travel to Moscow tomorrow morning, where, according to a Kremlin statement, he has been invited to attend a military parade marking the 73rd anniversary of the victory in the Great Patriotic War. Following the parade, the Israeli leader will meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin, during which Netanyahu is expected, among others, to reiterate Israel's concerns regarding Iran's entrenchment in Syria. The meeting is also expected to follow up on a phone conversation the two leaders held earlier this week, during which Netanyahu and Putin discussed Iran's nuclear program and the ongoing conflict in Syria. 
Now to Israel's northern neighbor Lebanon, where the Iranian Lebanese proxy Hezbollah declared the election results in Lebanon would guarantee the protection of what they termed as the resistance referring to the reason the Shiite Muslim militia was initially founded, a resistance movement against Israel. Hezbollah, based on preliminary results secured along with allied political groups and individuals, at least 67 in the 128-seat parliament. Seats in the Lebanese parliament are divided according to a strict sectarian quota. The number of Hezbollah lawmakers was the same or little changed at around 13, but candidates supported by the group or allied to it made significant gains. نحكي عن حلفائها، نحكي عن أصدقائها، منقول بأن توكيب المجلس النيابي الجديد يشكل ضمانة وقوة كبيرة لحماية هذا الخيار الاستراتيجي. لحماية هذا الخيار الاستراتيجي. Lebanese Prime Minister Saad al Khariri's future movement, which is backed by Saudi Arabia, won 21 seats in the election, down from 33 at 1, the last time Lebanon elected a parliament in 2009. Despite the losses, the result positions Khariri as a front runner to form the next government as the Sunni Muslim leader with the biggest bloc in parliament, a reality Prime Minister Khariri stressed the international community should look at in a very positive way. كنا مرهنين على نتيجة أفضل صحيح وكنا مرهنين على كتلة أوسع فيها مشاركة مسيحية وشيعية أفضل كمان صحيح لكن كل شايف أنه التيار المستقبل كان عم يواجه باللحم, باللحم الحي مشروع إقصاؤه عن الحياة السياسية وعن مشروعية تمثيله لمكون أساسي من مكونات المعادلة الوطنية بالبلد اليوم قدامنا مرحلة جديدة وقدامنا تحديات كثيرة وأنا على رأس تيار المستقبل مستمر بخوض هيد التحدي على كل المستويات السياسية والوطنية والاقتصادية ومعنا رصيد شعب كبير شافوه كل اللبنانيين بكل المناطق International community always wanted an election and we had an election and this is the results of the elections. I think the results are in favor of Lebanon, of a free Lebanon, uh, of democracy, of a free democracy in Lebanon. I think uh, that Lebanon has showed the international com community its uh, resolve in dealing with uh, refugee issues and everything. I think uh, Lebanon, the international community, should uh, look at the results in a very positive way. This is the only way I can see it. Lebanon is under pressure to prove to international donors and investors who pledged more than $11 billion to Beirut last month that it has a credible plan to reform its economy. Holding elections was seen as a key part of this process. Nevertheless, turnout was lower than the last legislative elections in 2009, with only 49.2% partaking in the vote, down from 54%. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.